I'm here with Cyber City Media, sitting with the DreamHack Dallas Cosplay Judges, fresh off of the Cosplay Championships. How are you guys doing tonight? Great, actually. <laughs> yeah, it was a really amazing competition. Like, people brought out some of, like, the best stuff I've seen at any any costume contest. Yeah, from the very moment of the pre-judging, we had so many amazing participants, such a positive attitude, and really good sportsmanship. Yeah, everyone. I mean, what we had like two people jump from two different categories. So yeah. we had a novice go to journeyman and a journeyman go to master. And that's, r that. I mean, I can count on my hand the amount of times that's happened. And the yeah. fact that happened twice here, I mean, that says something. Yeah, yeah, just the fact that we were so blown away by like their costumes to begin with. Yeah. Like, you deserve to be hired. Yeah. I mean, I can tell it's a really great costume when I'm like, I want that on my body. <laughs> like, right now. There's a lot, of, a lot of jealousy. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it's it's like you get jealous, but then also I, like, I find I get really inspired after I do a costume contest because like you hear these like innovative ideas and you're like I want to try to make that or I want to try to use that idea or I'm going to steal it and then so I go home and I'm like now it's time to make stuff and so that's what I love about judging costume contests. So before we jump too much into the contestants I do want to let everyone know who you guys oh. are. So <laughs> our inspired uh, one on the end here is Riddle so she is a well-known recognized very talented cosplayer with a, a wide range of Tinkerbell to fighting games Snow White. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I cosplay what I love, and I love a lot of things. <laughs> Video games, anime, you know, uh, superhero movies. It's like basically kind of either I got to love the character, or sometimes I just love the design or the challenge of making an outfit. And then next up right here, we have Ariath. So she is cosplayer, streamer, still a student, too. So I don't oh. know what your schedule is doing. <laughs> oh, God, it's everywhere. Like, I, I think especially when I was making the costume that I'm wearing right now for uh, – for DreamHack, I s was working like 10 to 14 hour days trying to finish it in time. So uh, I luckily I have a lot of time to work on costumes. So pretty much I'm back to back making costumes like consistently. So um, uh, once again, like she mentioned, like going to conventions gets me super, super inspired. And I'm always like, oh man, seeing big builds especially, I'm like, I wanna go make a big build. <laughs> And then last up, we have M. Jasmine, who is an insane cosplayer all around. I think most people always talk about her Overwatch. I bring it up literally every <laughs> time, but I saw her in a League cosplay yesterday. So I think no matter the game, you kind of <laughs> rock it every time. Um, yeah, Overwatch is pretty much what got me into the cosplay scene in here. And my main character will be Sombra. And I cosplay her for two main reasons. One, I speak Spanish, so I love seeing people's reactions when they are just kind of like trying to be funny and talk to me in Spanish, and I'm like replying, in I mean, answering in <laughs> Spanish. Yeah. So yeah, and the other reason, um, I love POC representation in video games. Mm -hmm. So gotta rep our girl. And I also got to say, she's wicked fast at putting on eyeliner. Like, <laughs> I saw her put on some eyeliner, and it is on point, and she did it like <laughs> whoop, 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 and I'm like, what is this sorcery? <laughs> Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about some of the contestants we had today. So Riddle kind of went into, we had a few category switches. Mm -hmm. So I want to give a little background there. So at DreamHack, there's actually three different categories people can compete in because we want everyone to compete no matter their experience level. So we actually have novice, journeyman, and master, and those correspond to how long you've been cosplaying and how many times you've competed. So what did you guys see today and what little switch arounds did you make? Uh, we had a, uh, a May from Overwatch who, honestly, I was so blown away by the construction on her jacket especially. Um, it was so clean. It was honestly like the lining she put in was so clean and beautiful. I was like, straight up, this is one of the most beautiful jackets I've ever seen made. And I'm like, this deserves a lot more praise than what it's getting. You are not journeymen. You need to be masters, like straight <laughs> up. I always have a super soft spot when someone translates a costume. Because when you think about, you know, we look at these outfits and we're like, oh, these are costumes, these are cosplays. But to those characters, those are their uniforms or their clothing. So the fact that she was able to create this jacket that looks like an actual piece of clothing you can buy out of a store, that's what really impressed me about this jacket. I thought she actually bought it out of the store, slightly modified it, and mm -hmm. brought it in. And then we found out she had made it completely from scratch. And that just blew me away because it was just so well done. Yeah, even just the little details, like the little leather letters that she's sewn individually, that is a lot of effort just 
for the sake of doing it. Yeah. You know, you could have done it so many different ways, but you decided to put the extra time on every single detail all over your, your costume. So that's really, to me, it's very humbling to see someone so dedicated to their passion. Yeah, and I mean, the, f the, the fact that she had the, f the forethought to sew the, leather, the letters onto the fabric before she put the whole jacket together mm -hmm. it wasn't an afterthought. And then I think the other one we were really impressed with was uh, Tiny Tina. Yeah. And uh, I mean, she just, like, as you were saying, Borderlands is very cell shaded based. And the fact that she, like, took that character and just adapted it to her whole body, her clothing, her skin, and everything yeah. like that. It wasn't just that, like, part of it was painted to look cell shading, the whole outfit was painted. Like, she went, she didn't have to go that far to uh, create a really well cell shaded piece, but she took the extra effort and the extra time and painted the entire thing to make it look like she leapt straight out of the game. Yeah, because the way I usually see Borderlands is they'll have like, you know, the fabric and then they'll just add the highlights and the lowlights. Mm -hmm. But yeah, she essentially just painted her whole fabric. I loved her wig because it was that sort of like mm -hmm. craft foam. So it looked very cartoony and then she painted that as well. So yeah. that's what I love. The first thing I asked her was she had the Band-Aid across her mm -hmm. nose. And I was like, did you, did you paint that Band-Aid on? That Band-Aid looks painted. And she's like, no, it's a real Band-Aid. I just painted it. And I was like, I, I could not tell. <laughs> it it looks so really good. Awesome. And actually, some of the pieces, I saw that she added texture, like mm -hmm. with the sewing machine and everything. And it just added a little bit more di dimension. Even though the whole costume looked 2D, she also made it look more 3D with yeah. the textures mm -hmm. in yeah. the fabric. She was honestly, like, I think when we look at stuff, we look at it as a complete cohesion mm -hmm. from top to bottom. And, like, she created a cohesive look. And that was the same with the May. Everything was cohesively mm -hmm. put together. It looked like everything belonged, not like something was piecemealed. So, yeah, I think those, those are reasons they kind of got pushed forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you guys did a great job kind of going through all of the amazing cosplay and making these decisions. So I kind of want to give people watching an idea. What does the judging process look like? What do people expect when they head into a cosplay competition? I mean, expect for us to get all up in your business because, <laughs> I mean, that's what I really loved about judging with these ladies is we got up from behind the table, we went up, we got up close, we are going to look under your seams, we're going to look behind your craft foam, so make sure everything is finished from front to back, especially if you're competing in the master division, you know, it's the smallest details that will push you ahead. Uh, for instance, the one thing I really loved about the Reinhardt, I mentioned did on stage was he had a smoke ring kind of in his th in the back of the exhaust but around the ring there was sort of like the heat marks mm -hmm. as if flames had come off the back of it and that is like something someone sitting in the audience is never going to notice but he knows the judges are going to get up close and notice those details so the fact he like paid attention to that i think really goes a long way yeah definitely my big thing is uh, and part of the reason why uh I felt the nine tails in particular deserved a win was I flipped her seams when I checked her dress and um, her stitching was even and uh, her seams were finished, which was super nice. And uh, like, that's what I look for is like this, like you may have like a really big build or like something that incorporates a lot of techniques, but if they're not cleanly done, if they don't look like you took your time and that you really put in the effort for it, um, it doesn't matter how big or impressive it may be. Um, I will always value a clean build over anything that looks like over the top. Yeah, adding to this, uh, going back to the Reinhardt, you can see this build is so big that some parts of the inside armor are going to be visible. For example, when he lifts his arms, when he moves his legs, and you, you see the foam inside and it's nicely finished. Everything is even, everything is black, so it looks nice. It's not like you're seeing strings of hot glue hanging out, you don't see strings of fabric, you don't see anything. Everything is clean inside out, and that's really impressive for such a big armor build. Yeah, especially when like you sit there and you get in the idea like, oh, it doesn't matter what the inside looks like because no one's going to see it. Oh. Like if you really want to go the extra mile, <laughs> make sure the inside <laughs> of your costume looks nice because if someone is judging it and they do get to see it, like that's also an added part for you as a contestant mm -hmm. to show off like, hey, I finished the inside of my costume too. Do you want to see how nice it looks? And uh, that's what I always tell people like when you're competing in a cosplay competition, like don't talk about what you didn't finish or what you made mistakes on. Talk up what you did do and what you went and put the extra effort into because that's what you should be showcasing to us and like even if it seems small to you it may be a big detail to us so one last question for you guys this is going to be the cheesy question i hope you're ready for it 
<laughs> yeah. Riddle's been giving me so much <laughs> sass about my cheesy <laughs> questions and everything. She always, so much about it. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but basically, I just want to know, when you guys judge, when you're a guest, when you're here in cosplay, what's the favorite thing that you get to see at a convention? What makes you want to keep coming back? It's, it's for, wow. I mean, I've been cosplaying for almost 20 years, so I've seen a huge evolution from, um, you know, you couldn't buy cosplayers, there was no social media, and we were kind of like, cosplayers were kind of the, the rejects of the con. We mm -hmm. People just didn't understand, to kind of seeing now it's like these amazing conventions that are hosting these big events, and I, uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Cosplayers uh, rarely have pockets, so that's actually yeah. impressive. Yeah. You could I carry your phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, I mean, there's so many things I love. I love being able to talk to other cosplayers about crafting techniques because for me, cosplay is almost kind of a very solo hobby. You're at mm -hmm. home in your pajamas usually, watching Netflix, casting, molding, <laughs> sewing, and then to get to come to a con and kind of like get to talk to people about the techniques or get to appreciate the costume or, or listen to the way they made it, like that's what I, I really enjoy about like the cosplay portion of it. I mean, I love getting my photos with my favorite characters as well. I mean, I'm just as much of a fan as anybody mm -hmm. else out there. So I was like, oh my gosh, Reinhardt, or like, you know, I'm a huge Zelda fan. So when I saw the Zelda, uh, I was just like, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, definitely, like, when it comes to cosplay, my favorite thing is, like, especially when you're cosplaying, like, one of someone's favorite, like, game or anime or, like, character, and they get all excited seeing you, and like, oh, my God, yeah. I need to have a photo. And I'm like, that's one of my favorite feelings. But, like, as a judge, I think especially with, like, this competition today, we had two people move up in, like, rank, and, like explain to them like hey uh, you got bumped up to masters or hey you got bumped up to journeyman because we were so impressed and then like especially them coming out with like wins yeah. is like seeing the ecstatic expressions on people's faces when they find out they win and i'm like i got to see your costume up close you put in so much work and it shows and i'm super proud like i'm proud of all of our cosplayers <laughs> they were so great i did say it was the cheesy question yeah. um in my part two main things First, seeing the new cosplayers and seeing, you know, all the effort that they put into their costumes, all these new techniques, all these, we're constantly learning as cosplayers, as crafters. We're always trying to find uh, new techniques, new ways to do things, and I'm more than happy to see a newcomer and try to see, try to learn for them, you know, try to take them in and be like, hey, I want to see what you do, and let's be friends, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, on the other hand, when you're in the cosplay community for a while, you've seen a lot of people, you've met a lot of people, and it's amazing to see them grow. You remember the first time you met them and they did costumes one way. And then after years, after months, or I don't know, depending on how fast they progress, you see them come here and with these mind-blowing costumes. And I don't know, to me it's just exciting to see how much they've grown mm -hmm. to me. So, new techniques, sharing with cosplayers, seeing their faces when they win, and the growth. I think those are good answers. Yeah, yeah. Really good answer. yeah. I hope to see more people enter the DreamHack competition next Absolutely. year. Yeah, yeah. I want to see more cosplay come to DreamHack. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's we need more cosplay here. Yeah, I mean, it's such, it's, it is a super rewarding hobby for those who don't do it. I mean, it can be very frustrating, I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. But it's, I say cosplay is very rewarding. Um, you come out, you have this sense of pride, either you've sourced something perfect or you've created something. And I mean, and that just goes through the rest of your life. I mean, I know so many, many of us growing up, you know, we were like nerds and maybe didn't have the most confidence. And it's a common story about a lot of cosplayers as they start cosplaying and they gain the confidence through the creation of cosplay. So, uh, you know, I've always like, when I see kids enter contests too, and then they start going into the adult division, mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, that's really cool. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. You guys did an amazing thank job. You thank so you so much amazing. for having us. Yeah, you've been amazing with the scheduling, communication. Yeah. Like, let's give a shout Everything. out to her. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. give her a shout out. Like, I'm here to make cosplay yeah. look uh -huh. good. And I think you guys look pretty good. So thank you, cosplayers, so for bringing your passion. So five-year reunion, guys, in five yes. years, we'll bring the yeah. team back yep. together? Yep. That's Sounds the good. plan. You heard it All here. right. So <laughs> Cyber City Media with the DreamHack cosplayers. Bye.